Hi, welcome to another video with Norse Node of the Moon in Astrology series. In this video, I'll be specifically talking about Norse Node in Aquarius, South Node is in a Leo. Before I get started, I strongly recommend you guys to watch my introduction video because I have a little bit different understanding about Norse Node, South Node of the Moon compared to the modern astrology. And another thing is I'll be just talking about the zodiac sign Aquarius and the Leo. I will not get into house placement, but just know that house placement also plays very important role. Um, it represents the area of your life that your north node, south node manifesting. Uh, let's say like I have I have this exact placement and mine is in the Leo in the ninth house and Aquarius in the third. So for me, it manifested in the area of my belief system, uh, the religion and education area shifting to the third house matters. So just check your house placement. I might make a uh, future like house placement videos about the North Node and South Node. And the last thing is uh, you may not resonate everything I say in this video because you have a different uh, conjunctions and planet energy influence uh, in your North Node and South Node. Let's say you have a sun conjuncting your North Node or you have a planetary like squares to South Node, like it's going to totally manifest uh, differently than someone else doesn't have any planets. For example, I don't have any plans in my South or North node. So I have a, I can translate it directly compared to someone has a lot of planets in there. They might feel the energy totally different. So if you want to have more integrated or holistic idea of your North node, South node, and how it plays out in your birth chart, I do personal reading. I will leave the contact information down below in the description. Oh, also my introduction video also in the description if you're wondering like where do I find it and yeah let's get started I'll start with the the nodal axis of Aquarius and the Leo then I will get into how it might manifest um, in your chart or in your life so when we talk about Aquarius and the Leo from evolutionary astrology perspective like the entire chart or the zodiac wheel is a progression of nature. It really correlates with the natural law. Um, let's say Aries, it also correlates with our lifespan. So let's say Aries, a baby just born to experience this physical world. When you progress, when you come to the Leo, it's like the teenager uh, phase of our life where we're starting to <clears throat> develop our individuality, starting to know who we are separate than what our parents told us, how we were raised in that environment, the culture, with education we received. So in our teenager years, we start like differentiate ourselves from others. So that's like the typical Leo energy of <clears throat> uh, having, uh, recognizing your unique and individuality and you stand out from the crowd and you also explore the life choices on your own like you might move out from your parents and you find a place and live on your own so it kind of correlates with that phase of our life and when you go up we get more mature and the top half of the chart is more of our public life after we mature so Seven house starts with relationship, nine house education, 10 house, our career, public image. When it comes to 11 house, which is ruled by Aquarius, now we're <clears throat> from seven to 10, we're kind of like playing by the rule and learning our lessons in the relationship to others in the society. But when it comes to Aquarius, we're let's say you're at the age of 30 late 30 the 40s now you're also differentiating yourself in a workplace where it's way different than the leo is differentiating itself from the family or friends so now you're more that leo energy is mature than aquarius so it's not like that aquarius and leo just 
hate each other, they're against each other. Actually, they correlate with each other. And Aquarius is more like higher octave of Leo. It's their uh, energy is always balancing each other. So Aquarius is looking at differentiating itself more uh, adult perspective or mature perspective. I'm not just going to go out, do whatever I want like Leo, but I would consider how my action can be beneficial to society, how I can fix something. Because tenth house is more of like following the rules and achieve success. But 11th house, once you get to the top, then what are you going to do? You start uh, using all the 15, 20 years of working experience, you become creative. You, you come up with your own solution to the problems that you see at the workplace, you see at the society that uh, you have your unique perspective or solution to solve that problem. So Aquarius is a sign also correlates with like technology advancement and Aquarius, like if someone has like strong Aquarius in their chart, they can be very, <clears throat> they don't follow the rules, they're rebellious. Uh, in the modern astrology, Aquarius ruled by Uranus. Uranus is a rule breaker. So it's not the like the Leo way of more childish rule breaker. It's more mature level of uh, how we can change the law or how we can set a trend that other people can follow because like Aquarius correlates with getting rid of the or walk away from traditions, rules and laws that doesn't serve us anymore. So once you master the law and the rules in a 10 house. Now you're going to break them in the 11 house with your unique ability and your differentiation of yourself from the majority in the society. Uh, so I hope this kind of gave you understanding of how Leo, uniqueness of Leo and uniqueness of Aquarius correlates with each other. One is more a teenager energy, like spontaneous, creative, expressing uh, about me, which is, it's, it's not a bad thing. Like at some point, like we have to individualize ourselves, uh, figure out what our needs compared to what our parents want for us, what our friends or peer pressure, like we need to find our own way. So in that sense, Leo is Leo energy, also sacred energy. And when it comes to Aquarius, it's more a mature energy where it uses that Leo empowerment and individuality, how it can plug into society, how my individuality and differentiation, my unique talent brings something to the society. So in that sense, North Node, South Node is not... Uh, like you got to stay away from the south node and go towards north node. It's more of how can I build on my south node placement, which is Leo. I differentiated myself. I individuated myself. Now I know who I am. Uh, if you have Leo ascendant, like it's a journey of figuring out who you are and empowering yourself, stand up for yourself, have your own values. So when it comes to Aquarius, now I know who I am, how I can empower others, be part of the group, be part of the society, but still not lose, uh, lose my own identity. So when you merge with a group, you don't get, uh, you don't lose your own identity, you still keep them, but you still play a role in a society. So um enough about leo and aquarius now let's talk about how this north node south node placement will manifest in your life so most of us we will experience our south node first 28 30 years of our life um i had a similar experience like i said i have the exact placement leo and south node and i did not have any confident or <laughs> um, I could not even imagine anything Aquarius related. Um, it was more, more of a more selfish 
life, I would say like I was center of my attention, my goals, everything I do, my first 20 some years. And then this idea of <clears throat> how can I be at service in a society with my unique ability came to me after I turned 30 or after I experienced my uh, Saturn return. So it's totally normal uh, <clears throat> for you guys living in your South Node first 30 years of your life. And so if you don't believe in like past incarnation or karma, like you're still gonna experience because we bring our karma with us and we still live in that karmic situation until we have the emotional maturity to deal with how we can break out of it. So around like 20 to 30, you start, life starts bringing you opportunity to develop the quality of more of uh, Aquarius energy where you can balance them out so i i list out a couple uh lessons you can learn with this placement so the first one is you are born with the feeling of specialty like somehow like you have an inner knowing of you're special you're different than everybody else you have a special destiny to fulfill because leo really represents like that we have a special destiny, uh, how we can find our purpose. And slowly when you move to your Aquarius um, energy, you realize it, you are right, you are special. Um, from spiritual perspective, like every soul created uh, unique and the only thing source wants is they uh, source wants you to be unique and it doesn't want you to copy anybody or live anyone's life it wants to create your own unique path so you can add to the entire expression of uh, the universe so the diverse the better that's what the universe loves <laughs> so it's okay to be unique and special and you are unique and special but when you move to the Aquarius side, you will realize that everybody is unique and special. So you, you finally come to understanding of, okay, I am special, but everyone around me also special and they have a unique purpose that I do not know. My role is how I can empower or influence people around me and the groups and organizations or anything that I'm a part of, Aquarius. How can I touch someone's life? How can I influence someone's life? How can I, uh, with my Leo energy, how can I empower them to go after what their dream of, uh, how they wanna live a unique life? So you are using your, uh, Leo talent and energy to help others, not for your own reasons. So that brings me to the, the second point of uh, using your talents for the greater good of others, using your talents for the benefit of the society. So anytime you pursue a goal, um, use your Leo talent in a selfish way, like I just want to gain more fame or want to gain more wealth. It might not turn out really well. You might suffer a little bit. Um, but once you change the intention, you might still do the Leo stuff. Like Leo is very expressive, creative energy. You might be doing your creative things. Like at some point I got into uh, film industry. I actually studied film and screenwriting in the in college so at some point my desire is more selfish like oh I want to win Oscar like it was all about me my fame my game but when you switch the intention of uh, how can I serve the public or the society with my creativity so how can I write a movie that can blow people's mind or like change their life for the better or for the good. And at that point, like your life kind of starts shifting or changing. 
So that's the second point, use your talent and gift because uh, you, you came with your Leo creative talent. It can be any area. It does not have to be movies or acting. It can be writing, uh, anything creative, trying to think of music, painting, what else can be creative? Yeah, anything that doesn't require you super logical, uh, you can go with the flow and you can create something that uh, makes you happy. It could be anything. So use that talent for the benefit of the greater good or for the group. And third thing is um, you might struggle with making friends because Aquarius also like um, very unique or rebellious that it it's hard for them to fit in because they fit in their whole life. Like from Leo to Capricorn, they've been playing the rule, playing with the rule of the society and following the rule. And they finally came to the point that, no, I need to play by my rule. I need to let go all the rules and laws that doesn't serve us or holding us back. So Aquarius is also associated with like walking away with your walking away from your past or something that doesn't serve you anymore so um in that sense like once you find your uniqueness unique place in a society it's hard for you to be part of the group or make friends people and then sacrifice who you are to fit in or please others um However, just know that like being part of the group or making friends doesn't have to be at the cost of you sacrificing who you are. You can still stick with your beliefs. You can still, oh, also like Aquarius is very ahead of its time. So when you come up with <clears throat> very unique ideas and it might scare people off and it challenges their status quo. So they kind of don't want to be uh don't want to hang out with you because you make them uncomfortable but know that it's crucial for you to become part of something especially if you have a lot of planets in 11th house like me um don't isolate yourself uh you can still be unique and a different and but still be part of the group and still make friends because just trust that there's always groups and friends that accept you for who you are and love you for who you are. It's one of the reasons I put myself on YouTube because I would think like, oh, nobody would listen or nobody would like me, but uh, it's not about me. Uh, I, I'm sure there's always someone that might resonate with me. So don't give up on making friends or being part of the group. And the fourth thing is, uh, I, I don't want to put this in a negative way, but having Leo South Node is really the universe trying to tone down our ego a little bit because Leo, Leo is ruled by the sun and sun is the center of the cosmos. And it also correlates with sense of self, so-called ego. Um, at some, if you're into spirituality a little bit, like we believe that like we're part of unity consciousness, everything is one. So when you separate yourself uh, from the source and you think you're a unique individual, that's the ego playing a role. And having Leo South note, like in this lifetime, your soul trying have that intention of toning down your ego a little bit. Um, how it played out for me was like my son placement in the 12th house. So the 11th house and 12th house is the detrimental to the sun because it's falling down. So my sun placement is not very strong. And it's in some sense, it's supporting my uh, North node, south node placement because my soul wants to tone down my ego. Of course, my sun placement cannot be too strong or my ego always wins the battle of 
my soul and my ego. So uh, everything so far, like reading other people's chart, I noticed this rule of how our all the planet uh, house placements always supporting our North Node, South Node. Uh, try to make it easier to you know manifest how like nudge you towards to the north node so i don't know if you can resonate with that or not just let me know um so toning down your ego doesn't mean you always face with trouble and hardship and suffering it's more of we're always encounter with events uh, encounter with people where like our ego suffers basically, but our soul is learning a lesson. So, but when you identify it with your ego, you would think universe is against you. It's making you suffer. I had that idea for 20 some years, like, okay, I think God hates me. <laughs> Everything I do just doesn't go well because it was trying to tone down my ego, not me. So it was not anything personal. Um, so definitely like when you guys have a goal or desire, double check with your intentions. Is this like ego centered uh, desire or is it more virtuistic? I do this because it's the right thing to do or is the good thing to do instead of no, it's for my selfish reasons or it's for my ego desires. So that's I have for you guys. If you watch my um, introduction video, I talk more spiritual aspects of North Node and South Node. And I also mentioned that like, <clears throat> once you get into more spiritual practice, it doesn't matter what your North Node, South Node placement is uh, because you're trying to balance all this energy through a spiritual practice. So our birth chart doesn't have much uh, control power over us. So um, I will be making more <laughs> videos about the spiritual practice and how we can dissolve our karmas because in Asian astrology, North node, South node is more like demonic uh, desires that keeps us going and keep incarnating because we want this, we want that and you will never be satisfied because any, anything in this materialistic world uh, is temporary. Like once you gain that, once you achieve a goal, you're still left empty and unfulfilled. So only when we spiritualize our desires, and we finally uh, have that peace inside us. So it doesn't matter what happens external, it's not gonna shake you. So before I lose you guys or bore you guys, I'm just gonna end it here. Uh, I'll get into the spiritual aspects more in the future. And if you resonate with this video, don't forget to subscribe. I will talk to you guys in my next video.